Now, let's move to today's perspective. And my guest today is a woman who's discovered a remarkable place. It is a 14 square kilometer tropical rainforest in the southeast of Madagascar. Now, she found the forest of greenery at 1,500 meters back in 2019, after in the past also being the woman who discovered a new species of lemur on Madagascar. Well, now her mission and the mission of the team of scientists has been to study the forest, try to help it continues to thrive, and it's the subject of a new documentary which is being launched tonight, which is going to be shown on French television, France 5 on Monday. Dr. Patricia Wright is the founder and executive director of the Institute for the Conservation of Tropical Environments and Centre of Albio, which is a world-renowned research campus on Madagascar. Thanks very much for coming in and uh, talking to us today. Tell us, first of all, then, about the discovery of uh, what is obviously, we're going to see some images of it while we talk, uh, a remarkable place. The discovery was by chance. It's amazing. A woman called me and said that she had a cave and that maybe tourists would like to come. But when we got there, there was more than a cave. There was this incredible rainforest in the middle of what looks like a, a desert. Mm -hmm. And when we saw that, I was wondering what is inside that forest? Mm -hmm. So that's when we started looking at the biodiversity, all the different kinds of plants and animals that are found there. I mean, it's, it's not a small area, is it? It's a huge area. So how come it hadn't been you know, found and, and looked through and investigated before? It's very remote. It's very remote and, and scientists hadn't been there before. So uh, it was a surprise, a total surprise, to find a rainforest there, since most of what's around it is just rocks. And what have you found that makes it exceptional? What makes it different to other rainforests? So we started to look at the, the biodiversity, the different kinds of plants and animals, and we found that they were from all over the island. There were bats there that were only found in the northwest. There were lemurs that the closest relative was way far in the south and the southwest. And frogs, we have at least three new species to science. Mm. And those are found in the eastern rainforest. The birds from the eastern rainforest, the plants are, are kind of a, a, a a, a conglomeration of, of plants from all over the island. So that was a surprise. It's, it's sort of like in the, uh, the middle of the island and it's like a, a kind of a, a re relic or refuge forest where animals probably came in to escape the fires. Mm -hmm. But how long has it been isolated? That's our next question. And what more? is in that amazing forest. How do you um, draw the line between, because obviously you, you want to investigate it and you want to look at all the different species, all the different animals. At the same time, you want to ensure that it can survive and thrive for the future and isn't damaged in any way. Yes, and of course, doing biodiversity surveys requires us to go inside the forest with lots of people mm -hmm. with their specialties. And um, so we, we try to be careful, but it, it is difficult. Mm -hmm. But we felt that the most important thing is to make it a protected area. So we worked with Rainforest Trust and our partner, MySet, to get all the paperwork done. And I am very pleased that it is a uh, community protected area, Category 5. And we've worked with the communities to make this happen. And so I'm fairly sure that this place will be preserved into the future. And presumably it's going to take a long time to, to do all the investigations, all the, the experiments that you want to do as well. It's not going to happen overnight, is it? No, 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 no. You know, science is actually quite slow. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, getting everything um, actually uh, analyzed, mm. it takes a long time. I mentioned at the, at the top you also discovered a new species of lemur uh, in the past. Tell us how that happened. That was a total accident. In 1986 I, arrived, 1986, I arrived in Madagascar to try to find a lemur that we thought was extinct. It was found in the fossil record, but we thought it, and we hadn't seen it for many, many years. So I was searching for that and accidentally came upon a new species to science. We named it, in 1987, the golden bamboo lemur. Mm. Beautiful animal. You know, golden color, eats nothing but bamboo, hmm. amazingly enough. And, and I read somewhere that it eats so much bamboo that it's eating uh, enough, um, uh, enough. Uh, what is it? It's uh, cyanide, isn't it? Eating enough cyanide that would easily kill a human being, for example. Well, it's, uh, yes. You know, cyanide is a toxin that can kill you if you take a, a bite of that bamboo. So uh, the fact that it eats cyanide-filled bamboo all day long makes <laughs> it a very special animal. Yeah. 
And um, what uh, since you discovered it, have you been able to to ensure that that, that that it can continue to thrive, or was it already thriving? Did it need help, if you like, to? to it's really needed help because uh, just as we were discovering it, the rainforest started to be chopped down by loggers, and I was very upset when this beautiful animal was was going to be uh, basically go extinct. Mm. So I went to the capital and talked to the powers that be, the director of water and forest, said, please, please, uh, make this a protected area. Mm. And he said, well, this is Madagascar, it's very poor. And uh, if you help us get the funding to make it a protected area, we'll assist you to make it a protected area. So we spent the next three years. And in 1991, it became a national park. Yeah, great victories you've had. Where, where does this come from in you? What, what um, kicked this into, into your psyche, that this was something that you wanted to, to do and, and took you to Madagascar? I've always liked animals, ever since I was a little girl. I've loved nature and animals. And then uh, I actually got my PhD in Peru, which is a very different place than Madagascar. But my first job was at uh, Duke University at the Duke Lemur Center. And from there, that was how I got to Madagascar to begin with. Mm. But it's a, it's, I have an innate sense of, of wanting to explore and discover things. Just, it's just fun <laughs> to do that for me. But it's incredible what you've been able to do, you know, <laughs> setting up this whole entire centre now to do exactly the kind of things that you're talking about, isn't That's it? That's right. Well, I have a little bit of a background in social work. Mm. I always like people as well as, as animals. So, the part of the National Park in Rana Fun that was the most important was we worked with the people to establish it. You know, working with them to figure out what they needed to alleviate some of their poverty so that they could have a protected area in the backyard. And then we used that knowledge to do it even faster in uh, Evuiburu in this new rainforest. The work's never going to end, is it? No, no, it's never going to end. There's so much to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, what comes next? I mean, you, presumably you've got to continue all that work to, to analyse all the, the, the different uh, samples that you've taken from, from looking at the forest so far. So now what we're doing is we're looking at Google Earth and seeing where these other patches are because it's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle, you know? If you've got some species in this patch and if there are large patches where there are the biodiversity, let's find out what it is and which, where they came from. It's wonderful to have genetics, you know, that you can tell the relationships amongst animals and plants and, uh, and partnerships. You know, we, we work very closely with Missouri Botanical Garden and, and uh, many other organizations uh, that help us to find out a lot of the things that we need to know to understand the deep history of Madagascar and its biodiversity. Finally, we've heard so much, haven't we, over the last five to ten years about the need to protect our planet, climate change, those kind of issues that, you know, the, the destruction, if you like, which man is, is wreaking in some parts of the world. How much of that do you see on Madagascar? I mean, is it relatively untouched at the moment or can you already see uh, human influence affecting things? There are parts that are untouched, but something like uh, 85 to 90 percent of the rainforest is gone. It's been slashed and burned and uh, destroyed. So although this patch was a great uh, joy to discover, uh, there's so much of it that has been destroyed. And one of my goals is to do restoration ecology and restore the areas that uh, don't contain lemurs and, and wildlife now. But maybe if we, we use endemic trees, we can restore part of the landscape. But we have to include the people. Yeah, because it's very difficult. And Madagascar is incredibly poor, isn't it? It is incredibly poor. And uh, if we can figure out some win-win where we can help the local people in addition to the wildlife, that's what we're aiming for. Perfect. Good to hear. A great message. And uh, congratulations on the discovery in the documentary. <laughs> we're talking about you uh, hoping to make it into English soon as well over the next few months. Is that right? Yes, yes. Hopefully we shall see it in English as well as in French. But if you do want to see it in French, uh, it's on France 5 at uh, 9 o'clock, I think it is, on Monday evening. So you can watch, uh, watch it on uh, France 5. Thanks very much for coming in and talking to us. Dr uh, Patricia Wright uh, from uh, the founder and executive director of the Institute for the Conservation of Tropical Environments. Thanks. Thank you.